what we're looking at here is your coal versus wildlife activity. And the first thing I want to draw your attention to is this blob up here. The blob just simply represents a chunk of land that we own. And our land is divided into six pieces, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And on each chunk of land, we have a deposit of coal. And as you can see, each chunk of land has unequal distribution of coal deposits. B having uh, the least amount at one, and D having the most at eight. When we look at them all together, you're gonna find if you added up the dots, there would be 24 deposits of coal total on our chunk of land. So we can do one of two things. We can either use our land for uh, wildlife preserve and the government's gonna pay us, or we could mine for coal. Either one gives us some sort of profit. If we only mine for coal, we'll be able to mine 24 units of coal. And if that happens, then we wouldn't be able to put aside any land for wildlife. Now, again, highlighting B there shows us that if we eliminate one chunk of land, the chunk of land we want to eliminate uh, from mining coal and convert over to wildlife would be B because it's the least costly to us. There's the least trade-off. So we'd still be able to mine for 23 units of coal and we would have one chunk of land dedicated to wildlife. Those are our possibilities. So if we go back up and look, well, which one would we give up next? Look at E. E has two deposits of coal, which is the next least costly uh, of our options, while we can still mine A, C, D, and F. And so we'd subtract two from the total amount that we could be mining, and we'd still be able to mine 21 units of coal. And now we would have two chunks of land dedicated to wildlife. If we wanted to look for the third least costly option, then we have to go to chunk A of our land because there's three deposits of coal on it. We give that up. So now instead of mining 21 units of coal, we can only mine 18 units. And now we can mine, th or we can have three chunks of land for wildlife. If we want to continue the process, F is the next least costly. It is going to cost us four deposits of coal because that's what's on it. So now the best we can do is 14 units of coal and we would have four chunks of wildlife. If we wanted to do one more, have five chunks of wildlife and still have one chunk of land dedicated to coal mining, we would uh, obviously get rid of F. That costs us six units, so now we're down to eight and we are up to five chunks of land for wildlife. And then lastly, if we didn't want any coal mining to be done because we found out how bad coal is for the environment when we burn it, uh, we are now down to zero and we have converted all of our chunks of land over to wildlife. So what we're doing is we're going to take these numbers that we've got in this schedule that we've created, the economic term for this t-chart is a schedule, and we're going to plot the points out and what will result is a production possibilities curve, also known as a production possibilities frontier. So you might hear PPC or you might hear PPF. What we're doing is we're showing, given all our resources, these are the two products we can produce. Every time we produce more of one, it automatically means there's less of another being produced. So there is a trade-off between coal and wildlife. And notice as I started numbering these, uh, I went up by four with the coal deposits because there are six lines and the maximum we could produce 24 units of coal so it made sense to go up by four and as I was numbering I miscalculated there quickly. I'm selecting a different color to plot the points that are from the schedule onto our graph here so zero was the of wildlife meant we could get 24 coal one wildlife means we can get 23 units of coal and so that second plot that I put down I got to move that up a little bit so you're going to see me do that in a moment there we go and now I'm going to be a little more careful and make sure I go to the chart and look at the points and just checking them off as I plot them on there I, I normally don't do that but for your benefit just want to see where I'm getting those points from I'm checking them off as I go so over 3 up 18 over four on the wildlife, up, up 14, over five, up eight, and then over six, up zero. And then I can connect the dots there and that creates my production possibilities curve. Any possible combination 
could be found inside of the curve. So from zero on out to the curve, these points are all feasible. If I wanted to convert two chunks of land and mine only 10 units of coal, I could do that. It's inside the curve. Uh, any possible combination outside the curve is considered not feasible or not possible because we can't do it with the amount of resources we have. We would need to have more land or more coal deposits in order to push the curve out. So you'll see that happen in our next example, Goldilocks and the Bear family.